And because it's important to Jesus, it ought to be important to us. And see what are some guidelines or some helps on revolutionizing our own prayer life. Two passages of scripture, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 through 16, and 1 John chapter 5, 11 through 15. So if you would turn with me now to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. For we have not an high priest, which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. And in 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 through 15. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. <coughs> and this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of Him. Amen. 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 I want to see the scriptural background that should motivate us and drive us to pray. Each one of us should have times set aside that we can get along with God. Whether how many you do, that becomes a personal thing. The Jews felt like they need to get together with God three times a day. The Muslims think they need to get together with God five times a day. I want to tell you, if you're not getting to God one time a day, you're already behind. Amen? Amen? You see, prayer is our spiritual lifeline to God. It is our transfusion, if you will. It is our means of communication to Him and Him to us. And we talked about last week about that intimate relationship that God wants to have with us. Well, the only way you can have an intimate relationship with anyone is communication. Amen? And I'm not only just talking about one-way communication. you talking to God and never listening for what God says. I'm talking about talking to God, sharing to God what's in your heart, but at the same time, setting aside enough time to wait on the Lord. The Quakers used to call them quaking sessions. They would say that is because they would sit and meditate in their places of worship until they got a shaking, they said, from the Lord. That God was trying to get their attention and minister to them. Now, I've not experienced that, so, and I've never been a Quaker, but they're good people. Jesus thought it so important. He taught us in Luke 18, 18, 1, men ought always to pray and not to faint. Jesus said it's an obligation. It's something we ought to do. Just like men ought to worship God. These are things that we as children of God, if we want to enjoy the full fruits of eternal life, if we want to enjoy the full fruits of abundant life, we need to worship and we need to pray and more things than that, but at least those two to start with. He taught us to pray in Matthew chapter five, uh, chapter 6, 9 through 13, when he says, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. He said, This is the way you pray. In other words, he gave us a model to follow. 
And if you read the New Testament, you'll find prayers recorded that the disciples and the apostles prayed. You look in the Gospels, you will find prayers that Jesus prayed. And Jesus always addressed Almighty God as His Father. Isn't that wonderful? Because He wanted us to have that closeness. He died for us to have that closeness. Now, not only did He die for that, but He died that we might have access to the holies of holies. Do you remember one significant event when He was on the cross? While He was on the cross and the lights darkened, the veil in the temple was rent from the top to the bottom, exposing the holies of holies. Writers tell us it took 12, would have taken 12 yoke of oxen to tear that. But from the bottom up, this came from the top to the bottom. Guess who tore it? God Almighty. He tore it so that He was telling us, remember, in those days, there was atonement once a year. The high priest had to go in and he had to be pure. If he was not pure, God would not accept the sacrifice. And if God did not accept the sacrifice, the sins was not atoned for. And so that high priest would enter into the only place that he could go. Nobody else could go in there except the high priest. Enter the holies of holies, where the mercy seat of God was, the Ark of the Covenant. And when he offered the sacrifice... If God was satisfied, His glory would come down. And when God's glory came down, the bells on the hem of the garment of the high priest rang. And the people knew that God was accepting their sacrifice. And by the way, because sometimes they didn't know whether God would accept it or not, they put a rope around the high priest ready to snatch him out if the bells didn't ring. Because they didn't want God's glory to come down and kill him. So now, Jesus is our high priest. And Peter said, you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God is saying to us, at one time the priest had to go for you at the throne, at the mercy seat of God and offer a sacrifice. But now our high priest, Jesus Christ, has made that sacrifice. Once and for always. So that because of that, we can come before God. Amen. And when we come before God, we don't come in our sins. We come in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Everything that Christ has by faith becomes ours through Him. And so when we stand before God, when God says, Be ye holy for I am holy, He sees us as holy people because He sees us through Jesus Christ. He sees us as righteous people because He sees us through Jesus Christ. And He sees us as adopted people because we have been adopted by the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. He sees us as family. Amen. And I want to tell you, it is a sad state when one family member won't talk to another family member. Amen? But it's a wonderful harmony when you have reunions and everybody sounds like mockingbirds talking. They all talk at one time. You don't know what the conversation is going on, but you know something good's happening. God wants us to talk to Him. And the sad thing is, we might not be talking to Him enough. We might not and I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but I'm going to suggest this to you, because Jesus suggested it, that you have a prayer closet somewhere. It can be by your bed. It can be in a closet, if you like closets. It can be by a chair. It can be standing somewhere. It might be before you pull out of your driveway that you pray right there in your car. You see, it's not important where you pray. It's important that you pray. Amen? 
doesn't matter what the position of your body is, it matters what the position of your heart is. Right. Amen? Amen? You can stand up, you can kneel, you can lay on your face, you can walk, you can be still. The importance is that you are praying. Amen? And I want to tell you, I'm driving on some of these roads. You need to pray. The first thing we understand is this. Prayers as a vital part of the Christian life should be perfected through practice and believing in God's ability to answer them. Somebody says, how, how do I learn to pray? I said, pray. That's how you do it. You learn to pray by praying. Amen? You learn to pray by reading this Word of God and finding out what the promises are and holding on to them. You learn to pray to find God's will. But we're going to find out in just a moment that when you pray according to God's will, He hears you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Now, look at these three principles that the writer of Hebrews and that John gives us. First, he says, we must be done, we must pray boldly. Boldly. Right. Amen. Amen? In other words, he wants us to know that we can approach God. We don't have to grovel before God. We don't have to crawl on our knees to pray. He wants us to realize God has opened a door for us. It's just like if your father said to you, your earthly father said to you, come to me anytime you want to. If your father was in a business somewhere and he was a very important person, but that father said to his staff, if my child comes, that child gets in here beyond before anybody else. That's a loving father. God says, when my children come, my door is open because I tore it open. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I told them to come boldly. Amen. I've told them to come aggressively, fervently, effectively. So when we come before the Lord with our petitions, come strong. Come strong. Because when you come strong, you come believe. So, the first thing it says is come boldly. Why is this? Because Jesus was tempted in all ways as we were, yet without sin. Jesus knows what it means to be tempted, to be tested. And if you'll read the Gospel of Luke and also in Matthew, you'll find two occasions when Jesus had first His temptation, angels came to minister to Him. And then in the garden, when He was praying and His soul was sorrowful unto death and His tears became and sweat became as drops of blood, an angel was sent to minister to you. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Mm -hmm. So when we began to understand that, God said, come boldly to the throne of grace for what reason? That you might receive grace and help in your time of need. Amen. God says, this is why I want you to come boldly. I don't want you to come like beggars. You don't have to beg the Heavenly Father for stuff. It's already there. Grace is already there. Don't you know that if the Heavenly Father gave you the best thing that heaven, heaven ever had, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross from you, He's not going to withhold any good thing from you. Amen? Don't you know if God says gold is only important because I need to pave my streets with it. Jewels are only important because I need to put up some on the wall. Pearls are only important because I needed to gate a pearl. You see that? type of stuff is insignificant to God. But God said, one soul is important to Him. So that if only one soul was on the earth, Jesus would have went to Calvary. And you're that one soul that Jesus died for on Calvary. Amen? And so as a result of that, would you... How do you react when somebody does something real good for you? Do you stay away from them? 
I don't. Somebody does something real good for me, I want to go up and tell them I appreciate it. Amen? I want to tell them thank you. Amen? Because guess what? If I'm appreciative, then someday I might be able to help them, and then someday they might bring something back. Isn't that the reason why whenever somebody brings you food, you ask you wash the bowl out and give it to to them, knowing that you hope they fill it back up, give it back to you. <laughs> Come boldly. To what? To the throne of grace. Amen. That shouldn't make us be afraid or push us away. That's the Father's table. It is a table of grace. And God is saying, come on now. You need this grace in the situation you're now in. You need this grace to be an overcomer. You need this grace to help you through whatever you're going through. And folks, if you're not going through anything right now, live long enough and you will. Mm -hmm. Amen? I want to tell you, life is a school of hard knocks. Mm -hmm. Amen? But thank God for grace. Mm -hmm. Thank God for His power. Thank God for His mercy. Amen? So we come boldly to the throne of grace. Secondly, we come boldly because we want to obtain mercy and find grace in our time of need. Is it no wonder because Jesus was tempted and, and always as we were yet without sin that He already knows what we have need of before we ask? Mm -hmm. Is it any wonder because God became incarnate in Jesus Christ and walked upon this earth and knows our weaknesses and our strength that He is an able minister? That He knows what you have need of? He knows you need to eat to live. He knows you need to have clothes on your back. He knows you need to have a house to live in even though He didn't have one. But He knows you need it. He knows you need to have good relationships because He had a fantastic relationship with His Heavenly Father. And He wants us to have the same kind of relationship with our Heavenly Father as He has with His Heavenly Father. Secondly, prayer must be done confidently. Because of our knowledge of eternal life in Jesus Christ, we should have confidence and trust in Him that He will take care of us. Amen. Because we know we are already living in eternal life. The moment you were born again is the very day you started having eternal life. You're not waiting to get over there by and by to have eternal life. Eternal life is in you because the Spirit of God who is life is in you. And He's eternal. And so right now, we're experiencing eternal life. It is because we're already in the kingdom, because we already experience eternal life, we should gladly and confidently come to God with our needs. Amen. We should come to Him, and that word confidence implies faith and trust. We should come in faith and trust before God. Amen. You see, people will fail you. That's just human nature. Some people will fail you. Some of the best people I know, sad to say, have failed at some point. Because they're human. And I don't judge them. It's just a known fact. Well, let me tell you this. And many of you could say the same thing who have walked with God longer than I. God has never failed me. Amen. And I'm not going to put a yet on it because there will never be a time He'll fail me. Amen? God has never failed me. God has always come to my rescue and it's always been His time, but it has always been the right time. I might not understand it. Sometimes, like you, I think God, you're awful slow. And then God might say to you, well, Walter, you were awful slow in praying. Amen? Sometimes we carry our burden too long because we don't accept Jesus' invitation to cast our cares upon Him. We don't take His invitation to take up His yoke and His easy burden. Amen? So what do we need to do? 
When something happens, immediately run to the Lord. That's not weakness, that's strength. Be a strong enough man or woman. Whatever happens in your life, good, bad, celebrating, having a hard time, run to the Lord. You see, you don't always have to run to the Lord about all what you need. You can run to the Lord and thank Him for what He's already done. Sometimes the best prayer sessions I had is not asking for anything you say. Just thank you, Lord. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for rising from the dead. Thank you for giving me eternal life. Thank you for giving me the amount of years that you've given me in spite of what man says. Thank you for being my God and my heavenly Father. It is through this confidence or faith that when we pray according to God's will, He will hear us so that we are motivated to pray with assurance. Amen. I pray because I know God hears. Amen. My God's not like Buddha. I told you about Buddha. He's got nothing in his ears. Amen. No matter how many millions of Chinese bow and pray to him, he don't hear nothing. He don't have hands where he can help them. He doesn't even have a brain. Amen. I want to tell you, my God's hands are almighty. My God's hands are ready to pick you up like a heavenly father. Amen? I know it's one of the greatest things I used to could do, I can't do now, because they no longer do the bitty things, was to pick up one of my grand young ones or pick up one of my babies. I wouldn't even start now. I'd end up in the hospital with a hernia. But picking them up and loving on them, Amen? And I just picture God that way. Mm -hmm. That when I run to Him, He just picks me up and loves on me. Awesome. Amen? He loves me and He lets me know He loves me. And He whispers in my ear that He loves me. And that He will do anything for me. Amen? And when we have that kind of relationship with God, I want to tell you, you won't ever think about going another direction. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. There won't be enough devils in hell to pull you that way. Amen? Amen? Mm -hmm. When you sell out to God and you know you pray to God, I want to tell you, Satan fears and trembles when a saint of God starts praying. Because when you start praying, an earthquake happens in hell. Amen. We begin to shake the foundations of the devil when we pray. Prayer is powerful because prayer means he's getting in touch with his God. And his God has already whooped me once. And I already know what's going to happen to me. Amen? Amen. So it's all right to say, God, get them. Amen? Mm -hmm. Finally this morning, prayer must be done with the knowledge that God hears us and will answer our prayers. Mm -hmm. We must know that He hears us, not just think He does. Mm -hmm. When we come to the Lord, when we come to Him with our needs, we need to know God's going to be there and God's going to listen. Amen. The Bible tells us that His ears are attentive to the prayers of the righteous. His face is towards the righteous. God loves it. He's there in heaven and everybody's praying but He's hearing everybody individually. And He sends this angel out. He sends that angel out as ministering spirits to meet the needs of His people. We know that He will hear us if we ask according to His will. And He will answer our prayers. Amen? In other words, James says, you have not because you ask not. And you receive not because you ask amiss that you might consume it upon your lust. So don't think a prayer that's to satisfy your flesh is going to be answered. Amen? And always a prayer that's not prayed is never answered. Well, it is answered. It's no to start with. Because you didn't pray. If you want something, God's got it. Amen? And don't be afraid to boldly come before Him, to confidently to come before Him, and come to Him in knowledge. Because we know that God is listening we also know that our prayers are going to be answered. Amen? In other words, you know every day 
that something good's going to happen if you're praying. Because every day you're going to wake up in the presence of God. Every day you're going to have God on your side. Every day God's going to meet your need. Every day you can believe this, a supply is coming. Amen? Yo, you might not know when, and you might not know how, but you do know God's going to do something about it. Amen? Just like you would. I hope you would anyway. Being a mother and father who loves your children, I hope that you would be the kind of person that would ransack heaven to make sure those kids were taken care of. Amen? There's not a thing that my little grand youngest could ask me that I won't try to get. Poppy, if, 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 if they want Papa to get it, Papa, go get it. And I'll get things that I know that they like before they ever get there. I always make sure there's bananas in the house because they like banana and peanut butter. I always make there's some kind of little bit of candy in the house because they like that too. And for the other ones from Texas, I have to make sure there's some kind of fruit in the house because their parents like them to eat healthy. But I know what they have need of and what they like, and I get it ready for them. They don't even have to bother to come ask. But when they do ask, Papa, you got something? Yep. You want ice cream? Papa got it. <laughs> if you ain't got it, we'll go get that blizzard. Whatever you need. Whatever you want. And listen, my Heavenly Father is much better than that. A lot better than that. It is through this confidence and knowledge concerning prayer that we are aware of receiving what we desire from the Lord. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will what? Give you the desires of your heart. Give you the desires of your heart. Oh, that's conditioned. you got to delight yourself in the Lord first. Mm -hmm. And then He will give you the desires of your heart. Why? Because if you're delighting yourself in the Lord, you're going to ask according to His will. You're not going to ask in disobedience. You're not going to ask in lust. You're going to ask according to His will because you've delighted yourself in Him. Mm -hmm. And as a result, He'll give you the desires of your heart. Amen. And don't you know, most of the time, God wants to do it for you before you even ask. Mm -hmm. He's just waiting for you to share your faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. He that cometh unto God must what? Believe that He is. And that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Conclusion. The confidence we have in Jesus should drive us to more effective and fervent prayer lives. We should, we should have a revolutionized idea in our minds this morning, challenge to pray. And if you're not praying enough, pray more. Amen? And quite honestly, most of us don't pray enough. Prayer is one of the most powerful <coughs> weapons of the believer and the church. Mary Queen of Scots was afraid of the prayers of St. Patrick more than the armies of Europe. Mm -hmm. And that's powerful. When one saint prays and he scared the queen of a whole country mm -hmm. and the armies. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's some praying. Mm -hmm. A lot of the early evangelists prayed and bars closed down. Revival broke out. Many of the churches that are established across America was with some little group of people got together and prayed, Lord, I need a church. I need a place of worship. And they prayed, and God put it together. It is through our prayers that our faith is strengthened. And through that we see the mighty power of God manifest in our lives and in the lives of the ones for whom we are praying. This morning, I believe God's calling us to be prayer warriors. Amen? Amen? I believe that we need to come together as prayer warriors. Our country is in a dire strait. Mm -hmm. And the Bible teaches us we are supposed to pray for those who have authority over us. Mm -hmm. If we want to be clean before God, we need to pray for Him. Whether we like Him or not, we need to pray for Him. We need to pray for God's will to be done. From the top to the bottom. And I know that that's possible because one of the prophets said that they were sick from the top to the bottom. The king, the princesses, the priests, the prophets, they were all unclean before God. And we've got a sickness in America. And the only remedy 
this God moving in revival in the hearts of men and women. I believe there's enough believing Christians and praying Christians that we can see something change in America. Amen? We need to pray as our brother and our sister.